Hey ladies, have you ever been paid for something in advance or like paid for a job in advance, let's say, and like you got the money and you spent the money and then um, when it came time to do the job, <clears throat> you didn't really have a lot of motivation to do it because it felt like you were just doing it for free because you already got the payment, okay? If any of you have ever been in a situation like that, just think about that, okay? Just think about it for a minute and like remember that feeling, okay? This is how males feel many times when you give them sex prematurely in the relationship, okay? Yeah, they like the payment, okay? When you give them the sex, that's, that's their payment for having met your requirements, for having been, you know, a good kind of man, for having provided and protected and respected you and, you know, having done right by you. When you give a man sex too early before he's had the opportunities to prove himself to you, to prove that he's your guy, that he is going to love you and provide for you and protect you and do all these wonderful things. If you give him sex before he's done all that, you've basically given him payment in advance. And that's why they lose motivation. Yes, he may have been a guy who wanted to be a provider. But then when he got the prize, basically in advance, his motivation to be that man, to be that kind of guy, like just kind of went down. It's just a human nature, okay? That's why I would say it's not wise, okay? It is not wise to give anybody their payment in advance. The same thing, if you have um, contractors working on your house, do not give them all of the money in advance, okay? Give them some of the money in advance so they can go buy supplies but give them their final payment at the end once they've proven to you that they did what they said they were going to do and that what they, you know, what they were meant to do. If you pay contractors 100% in advance, half those contractors are going to run away with the money and the other half are just going to do a crappy job. They're going to do a slow job. They're going to lose their motivation. They're not going to finish the job on time. They might even cut corners and do all do all other kind of things, okay? You have to remember that we're all only human beings and the male human beings tend to be naturally a bit less integral. It's just their nature. It's not their fault necessarily, okay? We as women many times like, well, because we have a different type of conscience where like we feel more guilt and more shame and if we know that we owe somebody something, even if they've paid us in advance, like we still want to follow through on it because we, you know, we just, we feel bad. Like we just feel badly. Men are not built to really feel badly about things, okay? And it makes sense because if men, you know, historically were the ones out there fighting wars and battles and you know they had to be able to kill people and kill animals and things it makes sense that mother nature wired their brain in such a way that they can't really feel bad and guilt and shame because if they felt bad about things they wouldn't be able to kill people in war they would be about to, you know, kill someone and they would look the man in the face and say, you know what? He's somebody's son. I really don't want to kill him. I feel bad. Okay. When he's out there hunting in the jungle to bring home food to you. Okay. He may, you know, see an animal that he needs to kill. And then he'll be like, oh, it's so cute and fuzzy. I feel bad. I feel guilty. You know, what if that bear has cubs at home? Oh, I shouldn't kill it. I feel bad. I feel ashamed. See why men, it's not their fault. 
they're not meant to have a lot of shame and guilt. Okay, so you need to be very careful in how you conduct yourself and how you deal with men. You need to keep in mind they're not like women. Okay, if you get paid for a job up front and you lose motivation to actually do what you're supposed to do, it's a hundred times worse for a man. So if you pay him in advance by by giving him all the things you should probably just be giving to a husband or you know somebody that is like a husband I know some people don't believe in marriage but basically giving everything in advance to a man you're you know you're you're putting yourself in a bad situation you you really need to wait until he's done everything you needed him to do until he's proved himself Okay, um, just keep that in mind, okay? Um, if you understand men and how their psychology works and how mother nature wired them, you're going to have a much better chance at success in relationships. Men and women are wired differently, okay? Okay. Just because you feel guilt and you feel shame and you feel like you need to have a lot of integrity, men don't feel those feelings on the same level that you do. So they're going to react differently. Okay, if you know these things, you can really have good relationships. And you're really, you're going to feel like you're respecting yourself more and you're going to get more of what you want in life and in relationships. Talk to you later. Bye for now. And watch out for this trick, okay? All right. When women start to stand their ground and start withholding sex from men and saying, I will not have sex with you until you do this for me or until you, you know, you show me your dedication through providing for me financially or... I only have sex after I have um, a ring on my finger and the ring needs to cost so much or I only have sex after you've provided a beautiful home for me to live in. You know, whatever your standards are, whatever your requirements are, okay? Once women start standing their ground and enforcing these boundaries and rules they've set up for themselves, the first thing you're gonna hear from men and from other women who do not have standards, okay? They're both going to attack you. They are going to say, oh, what is this, some kind of transaction? Are you a prostitute? This is the first thing they're going to say, and it's gonna hurt your heart, okay? It's gonna make you feel bad, and it's going to make you think, oh no, people are mad at me, nobody's gonna like me, and I don't wanna be called a prostitute. <gasps> I should just lower my standards and just have sex with people because they're nice and not because they've actually proven to me that they're a high quality man, okay? This is a trick, okay? The word prostitute was made up a long time ago to make women feel bad about themselves, to make them feel like if they value themselves enough to have any upfront requirements before giving their body, and when you're giving your body to someone, you're putting your life in their hands. You could freaking die from a disease. You could end up a single mother. All kinds of things can happen to you, okay? It's not like a light thing when you just give somebody your body. You have every right to put some requirements on that. But a long time ago, some tricky individual said, you know what? We're tired of women trying to ask for stuff. We're tired of women trying to, you know, make us be good men to have access to their bodies. We're tired of women trying to require marriage or rings or houses. <laughs> so they said, let's make up a word. Hmm. Rostitute, costitute, uh, blah, 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 blah. uh, 
and they just started making up all these sounds and, and then they said prostitute we're gonna call it prostitute and then we're gonna tell everybody that prostitute and we're gonna tell everybody that it's wrong that the women are some kind of witches if they're prostitutes and that if they require anything before sex they're gonna go to this hot burning place way down under and they're never gonna get to heaven yeah guys come on let's make up this word we'll call it prostitute and we'll go around and we'll tell all the women that put a value on themselves that they will be this word, that they will be this word called prostitute and they're all gonna burn in hell. And on top of that, before they die and burn in hell, their entire rest of their life on the face of this earth, nobody's gonna love them. Ah, nobody's gonna love them. They're never gonna have love, okay? They're never gonna get love. And then when they die, they're gonna go to hell, the hot burning place. Let's tell them all that to trick them into not giving us, yeah, to trick them so they give us sex and we don't have to do anything for them before we get the sex. <laughs> okay, do you see how crazy this is? This happened a long time ago. Some genius made this shit up to get you to give yourself away for little or for nothing. And still to this day, people are walking around saying these words and making women feel bad for putting value on themselves. Okay, so just keep that in mind. This is the first thing. This is an old myth since the beginning of time. It's an old mind game they've been playing with women since a long, 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 long time ago to suppress women and make them feel wrong and bad about requiring men to do right by them before they give them their bodies, okay? This is like the oldest trick in the book. And what's crazy is that it seems so real because even other women are brainwashing on board with this idea. So yes, once you start having standards and boundaries and requirements on men before you give your body to them, before you put your life in their hands, which makes complete rational, logical sense to me. If I'm gonna put my life in somebody's hands, he needs to show me that he is responsible enough to handle that that he's going to take care of my life and take care of whatever he's about to put into my womb, potentially. That makes complete sense, right? Or I'm crazy, I don't know. So before he gets the pleasure of that, before he's allowed to have such an important gift in his hands he needs to show me he needs to prove to me in many ways that he is going to do right by me okay so all right so once you start having these kind of boundaries and requirements people are going to attack you men are going to attack you and say oh what is this some kind of transaction what you think your pussy's gold you think you're special? You're trying to have me do things for you first? Girl, you're pussy and shit. I can just go get somebody else's over there for less. Yes, you can. Because there's a lot of women walking around delusional and thinking that they're doing the right thing by giving themselves away for free or for close to nothing. Yes, he's absolutely right. He can go get some lower hanging fruit than you. And other women will talk badly to you. And, you know, it's a whole mess. But um, just be aware of this mind trick that people will try to use on you. The whole world will try to use it on you. Even your own parents. You know, if your parents are a little bit dusty, they will also 
try to have you lower your value and lower your standards, okay? A lot of people are gonna do that. If they don't have high standards in life, they're going to try to make you lower their standards so they can feel normal about themselves, so they can continue to feel good about themselves. When you have higher standards, you make the other people around you feel bad for not increasing their standards and nobody wants to feel bad. So it's easier for poverty-minded, dusty, uneducated, unenlightened people, it's easier for them to try to bring your standards down than to raise their own standards. A lot of people are really afraid to raise their standards and start charging, okay? And when I say charging, it doesn't necessarily mean charging cash, okay? If that's what you want to do, you can do that too, okay? It's your life. But charging as in requiring, saying, I require a ring on my finger. I charge you a ring on my finger, okay? My charge is a house and a ring and a minivan and, you know, whatever your requirement is, however you want your life to be, okay? Sex is not to be taken lightly. Sex creates other human beings that need to be taken care of. If you want to have a whole entire list, a three-page list of all the things you want for your future babies, you have every single right to give a man a list and say, if you want to have sex with me, I am charging you this list. I want a house and I want a fence in the backyard and a slide and a swimming pool and I want health insurance and I want you know this much money and a savings account for our children and you know, you have every right. You have every right to require whatever you want to require. You have every right to charge him whatever price you want to charge him to have access to your body, okay? Let them call you a prostitute. Let them, let them call you a prostitute, okay? Because what's the alternative, okay? If they're not calling you a prostitute because you have standards and you're, char you're charging for your body, okay? If you just let men have you because they want you or because they take you out and they buy you a freaking hamburger or whatever it is and, you know, then you go to bed with him, then guess what they'll be calling you? If you charge too much that pisses them off because they can't pay that, okay, they're going to call you a prostitute. If you charge too little, they're going to have their way with your body and then they're going to call you a slut, you have two options here. Either they're gonna call you a prostitute or they're gonna call you a slut. Unfortunately, this society though um, is actually a little more forgiving to sluts, right? Sluts don't necessarily go to hell, but prostitutes do. <laughs> Just think about this. Think about this psychology, how sick and twisted it is and how we've all been brainwashed since the beginning of time and how many people are on board with these concepts. Like highly educated people, people you think would be smarter are still in this old, old, old pattern of thinking, this old consciousness that is just degrading. It keeps women in a stuck position. It keeps them in fear. I'm so, I'm so afraid to be called a prostitute and to never be loved while I'm here having this human experience. And then when I die, go to hell. <gasps> I better not require anything from men or I better require very little because I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid to not be loved. I'm so afraid to be talked poorly to by dusty men and the women who support them that I'll just live small and not ask for anything. You know, just live small and safe. It's so ridiculous. Don't fall into this trap, that's all I'm saying. Do not fall into the psychological trap. 
even the people that are treating you like this for having standards, don't even be too mad at them because they, they don't really know any better either. They're just repeating what they've heard or what they've learned, even though they know it doesn't really make sense. They're also afraid. They're also afraid to not be like the rest of society. Okay. And, you know, even the ones that do understand, they're just trying to get something for cheaper. You know, they're trying to convince you. They're trying to call you bad names and put fear into you because it's the same way you know, they would handle themselves if they were at a flea market and they want to buy something and they want it for cheap. Okay. And it's just, it's a way of trying to bully you and negotiate to get a lower price for something they want. So, you know, don't feel too victimized by these small minded people. Just carry on with your life and put like a bulletproof protection from God over yourself and just know that people are going to throw darts at you. They're going to throw bullets at you. They're going to call you names to try to make you feel bad, to try to get you to lower your value. You need to stay strong. And part of staying strong, I've learned, is to keep yourself in a community of other women with the same mindset. Because when you're out there all day long and your family and, you know, men you're dating and having requirements on or you know throwing these darts at you trying to get you to lower your standards trying to make you feel bad it's going to get to you so if at the end of the day you can log on online somewhere <clears throat> or go and be with some other women who are like-minded they're going to build you back up and give you that strength to go another day another day of valuing yourself and having high standards okay so it's essential have a group of people whether it's online or in person or ideally both where you can go to those people and be with them and communicate with them to keep yourself strong because there's a whole world out here of people that want to do you for free and do you for nothing and take your body and you know have their way with you and you know get you to pay their bills on top of that you know, like, they want everything, okay? They want everything. They want you for free and they want you to pay for, you know, all the bills or half the bills. It's just, it's wild out there, girls, and you know that. But don't let these mind tricks mess you up, okay? Stay strong. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye for now. All right, I just realized something really funny. Well, I was just saying about how these men are trying to do it with you for free or, or for very cheap. And then on top of it, they're trying to lure you into like a 50-50 relationship where you pay half the bills while they're having your body. So that basically means they're trying to have sex with you and basically get paid for it, right? When you're paying half the bills, he's getting paid and he's having sex with you. He's trying to be the prostitute. He's trying to be the prostitute. He's trying to shame you into not being a prostitute so he can be the prostitute. You see how this mind trick works? Can you see it? He is trying to take on the role of prostitute. Do you just look around the people you know, friends, family, in this society? <clears throat> how many women have fallen for this trick? How many women are paying their prostitute by financially supporting him? That's their prostitute. They're housing a prostitute this whole time. 
is so ridiculous. The mind game is so ridiculous. It's unbelievable. And clearly this video, okay, I know I'm gonna get all kinds of nasty comments. <clears throat> These kind of videos really upset some people, okay? I'm just going to say it out loud because people are going to say nasty things anyway. So I'm just going to say whatever I want. Um, this video can only be understood by people of a certain level of intelligence. And people of a certain level of intelligence get what I'm saying here. And they're not triggered by it. Okay. YouTube is open to anybody in the world who wants to look at it. So different people of different mental abilities and different levels of awareness and enlightenment have access to these videos. So, you know, it's, it's a whole mixed pot. So there are going to be some people that are going to say nasty things in the comment, in, in the comments, only because they don't understand the message I just gave. They're only upset because they don't understand, okay? So I know a lot of times um, when people say nasty things in the comments, a lot of my subscribers will like respond back to them and you know, like they get upset. Like I get upset sometimes too. You know, some of the things that they say, like, get me in a bad mood. And I know the same thing happens for you guys, too. But, um, you know, just let it roll off. It's just people that are at a, at a lower level of awareness. And they just simply don't understand what I'm saying. Okay? So, uh, yeah. That was a fun video. And I know that the people who are in my circle are gonna know exactly what I was just explaining. And some people are not gonna know. And the people who do know are gonna find this very interesting and funny too, of how the whole cycle works, how the whole process works. And, um, you know, and you can look at your life like this and society and other people, like if you can look at it from this angle, you can just, you can have fun with your life. You know, you can, it's almost like you can just be entertained. Like you're watching all the mind tricks and the ways that human beings think and you can almost sit back and just like laugh. Let's laugh out loud about the experience we're having here on this planet, this human experience and how funny it actually is. It's really, it's really nice to like have that type of view where you can like look from the moon down at the earth and see all the craziness and see it from like a detached maybe that's what it's detached is when you see it like that and you're just like wow this is so funny look at what all these people down here are going through they're going through all this stuff and it's all in their minds it's all in their minds it's not even real it's real to them because they believe it's real but it's actually not real it's all made up stuff and made up concepts that people have latched onto and embedded into their minds. And now it's controlling their lives. It's nice when you can go way, way, way outside of it and just look and watch and observe. 
those are the best moments in life when you can actually see it from that perspective. That's like seeing it from your higher self or from a godlike perspective. And then you can really just kind of relax inside. You're like, none of this stuff is real. Why get my panties in a bunch over it? None of it's actually real. And then, of course, I'm a human being, so I have human moments, too, where I'm caught up in all that stuff, and I feel it, and I believe it, and I feel strongly about it, and... but then I have the other godlike moments where I'm like, I'm way up here, and I'm just down, I'm just like observing, I'm like, wow, I'm so glad I'm not in that mess with all of them. Yeah. God, send me more moments like that. Life is easy from there. Life is so easy when you're looking from that mindset, from that part of the brain. Life becomes easy. Is that what it means when Mina says, let it be easy? I wonder.